Okay, Dawn back again on uh, Mike um, Mike's setup. Um, <clears throat> so I'm on the SM58, which goes through the Behringer, Behringer mixer, Behringer VMP to the line input on the computer in the back, for in my case. And, um, oh, yeah, okay. And uh, then here's camera two, and then I'm back on the desktop here. Now I had set up... <clears throat> Um, got the lapel mic plugged into a USB sound card um, because I thought that was actually the only way I could do it. And the more I think about it, I might be able to plug. I'm not using the mic input, so I might be able to plug it into just the mic input. Uh, I want to spend forever doing all this. I want to get back to work on things like most most number one thing I want fixed is I want OBS to be able to stream. It'll record, but it won't stream. And then I want to get back to work on my server, but. I thought this might help because since my camera three battery's gone bad, I could still have this camera here, camera one and two, uh, and do my audio straight to the computer. But it doesn't sound very good. It sounds a lot of background noise. <clears throat> even almost, uh, even on when it's you know this. Uh, let me switch over to it. Okay. Um, now we're on the lapel mic. A lot of background noise. It doesn't sound as near as good as it did on the phone. And I was going to say it might sound a little bit like you're down in a barrel, but I don't think, I know it did that real bad when I had two mics on. But that was just, you know, because of having two mics on. <clears throat> and then if you use the, and I, I was mistaken about how it works, when you use the uh, uh, default, Mic Ox 3 is set to default audio device, then it is... Uh, always the SM58 no matter what you do up here in the sound preferences I guess you would have to go over here and set this one here as the default this is the default the built-in and this is the USB one um, yeah I don't actually don't know can't just right click and say default so uh, I, I don't know there should be a way to do it uh, in this you know in this program here uh, but I'm not sure because I've never really, you know, never even thought about it. Never had, to, I've never used, actually used both of these at the same time. And here's the applications that are using OBS. You can actually adjust things here, but I leave those alone, you know, because that's just more complication. Uh, but yeah, look there. One, two, three, four. There's four OBS uh, channels, I guess. And that's something else I did. Let's see. Um, the sound effects, I'm not using those, you know, desktop sound effects. But s something else I did was I went to <coughs> advance, right click on the gear there and go to advanced properties. I'm on the camera. I thought I went back to the desktop. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll try to ret retrace what I missed here. Um, Trying to get this to where it doesn't show all that, uh, at least not show all that. Uh, what I did was add uh, on the desktop audio and the uh, mic aux. I went ahead and I did that before I added two and three. I added channel five and six, and it just followed suit when I added them. Wow, that's funny. Uh, maybe that's just a good way to probably just a default way that's probably a good way to do it. The only one I don't have. Channel 5 and 6 selected. It was already a f uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what I have discovered, um, I'm pretty pretty sure because I read up on it on their site yesterday. I didn't show it in the video, but I read up on it. Um, I believe it mixes down. You can select them all, and, and wherever it came from, it'll mix it down to stereo for your recording. And unless you specifically set uh, OBS up to record in separate channels you can do that and that's pretty complicated and I'll, it'd be fun to learn it you know sometime maybe but uh, anyway um yeah this this profile here this uh well this set of scenes i mean doesn't have uh, i always call it the profile but the profile actually doesn't have anything to do with these scenes profile is really the the, the settings that you have here not the uh scene settings but the program settings and uh, <clears throat> finally figured that all out yesterday I don't know how I really forgot that I mean I set all this up in 
2016 the first time and uh, I guess I just forgot over the years I had to figure it out to do it you know but um, I don't have uh, audio from cam one so I was getting in the process of changing from cam one to cam two yesterday it was one of the things I was going to do and uh, this pro this uh, I'll just have to probably keep saying profile this scene collection does not have uh, camera two one in it it's all cam audio too um, <clears throat> but uh, I want to be able to so I'm going to close this I want to be able to use my cam 2 stream at the monitor I use that a lot in my desktop videos and it's on like that right now and the, the tablet doesn't work very well it gets behind really quickly it'll last five ten minutes and then it's so behind it's not really of any use even though it's higher resolution and everything you know you can't even guess what I'm talking about I mean you you're not seeing anything like what I'm talking about, and uh, that's a bad enough problem. Like, okay, let's see. Yeah, it's it's a little sluggish, but it's working. Let's see this one. Um, there it is. It seems to be slower, but sometimes the preview fools you. So now let's do them both. Let's see. <clears throat> Didn't get up high enough to really see. Yeah, they're not the same. That's for sure. Okay, <clears throat> um, but uh, now, so I was wrong about being able to use, where am I? How did I get on the default one? Well, that doesn't matter. I'm on, that means I'm on the S&P 58. Okay, so let's get back on just S&P 58, and that probably makes an echo. It did every time I had to anything going. Okay, so Mike Ox 3 is set to the default input, <clears throat> the default audio input. And uh, it's really not going to be any use uh, the way I want to work. So, uh, and what, well, here's what I had thought would happen. I thought if I switched, in the, if I was on the three and I switched, it would, uh, well, let's just demonstrate it again. Um, let's cancel on that so I can do it. Okay, I'll go to uh, Mike Ox 3, get off of this, and do Mike Ox just mic ox. There's a mic ox and then two and then three now. And that's where I added them was in the settings. Now this is the default um, input is the line input <clears throat> on the system and I don't it's just set itself that way probably because it was the first thing I plugged in I guess. <clears throat> so anyway um, if I uh, I had thought okay see now I thought I'd have to select whichever input I, if I was sitting here on if I was on mic aux 3 and it's set to the default input so I thought if I switched it switched right here that would switch the default input but it doesn't so here's the SM58 that would be the lapel mics but I can tell by the sound of them and you, you might be able to too if you watch through you know listen through these videos it doesn't do anything it's still on the uh, SM58 and I kept saying you know in the previous video oh this is this one this is that one well it wasn't it never changed so um, that tells me that I don't need this. Let's don't take it out yet. Now oh, I gotta close that again. Okay, get back, back on, on the SM58s and then mute that so that I won't lose any, uh, you know, lose my audio while I do this. I, you can do it. It's probably not a good idea to do, especially if you're gonna do this. Don't move real fast. That'll lock up the program. Or do something like sometimes I do it and I go wait and then undo it and then do it again and real fast and it, it almost it usually always locks up the program. So I'm going to disable aux 3. So you've got up to three mic auxiliary inputs. I had forgotten that. Uh, I, I plugged in the extra mic and expected it to just work. Well, you got to turn it on, you know, turn it on in your uh, settings here. This is in your profile. you got to turn it on in your profile. That's where these settings get saved is in your profile. All your scenes get saved in your scene collections. <clears throat> well, I've got more than one, so... Yeah, you can't look at that right now. But uh, so, what happened there? Oh, desktop. Yeah, and then you actually have another desktop audio device now. I don't know exactly what you'd need to do to have that working. I figure if I turned it on, I'd end up with echoes um, from the same thing being played twice. Like for instance, uh, uh, you have monitor of audio adapter, analog stereo, and monitor of built-in. So it would probably if I turned it on, well, I guess here, let's see what it shows. That might give me a clue. Oh, yeah, yeah. Built-in analog stereo. So there you go. You can select default, 
just like the mic, default built-in analog stereo or audio adapter analog stereo. I want to keep it disabled because that would just give me an echo, a real bad, nasty echo. So, uh, I, I've, for a minute there, I, you know, I thought, well, you might want to use the sound preferences to change mics, but that doesn't even happen anyway. So, uh, <clears throat> the only thing you do need is you need to set up your for your lapel mics. Well, for either one of them, but see, I had to I had to adjust the input to get the level as close as I could to the SM58. And it's hard to tell because I have a compressor and a noise gate on the my on the uh, SM58, and I don't on a lapel, so it looks like it's a lot louder. But listening to it, I think it's about the same. And see, if I'm not talking very loud, then it doesn't go up very far. But it doesn't take much to bring those levels on up. If I do that, it gets up there pretty high. Now I can. Well, it depends on how much sound, what kind of sound you give it. There, see as to what uh, what you get on here. This is a very inaccurate uh, audio meter. Uh, it's really hard to use. Uh, that's all I had to use until I got, until I found OBS Studio. And, um, but you still have to, you still have to use it and you still have to, well, what you can do is don't rely on the looks of it as much. I've finally learned don't rely on the looks of it because, you know, normally you would think you'd want to go all the way up to here. If you go up to there, It'll, I mean, it, it'll go. I'm not sure how far it'll go. I always had the misconception I would see that 100%, and I would think that goes with this, but it doesn't. It goes with the input. It does nothing to do with the level meter. I have seen them go over. I've seen it go over as far as that far, I think. Uh, so, you know, there's actually no gauge on there. So it's just really <laughs> the lousiest <laughs> VU meter I've ever had to use, and it, it's always been like that in Fedora and the Bane. So with the ALS, I don't know if this is part of the uh, ALSA programs or if it's part of the Pulse Audio, but uh, this is the what it's always pretty much looked like. And uh, there is a couple others you can install, and I've tried them out. And this one is just as good as any of the rest, except for it's they've adopted some Pulse Audio settings in here. They didn't used to be any, and you were being missing some of your inputs and stuff unless you used the Pulse Audio software. But now that's not a problem for since at least Fedora 23, maybe before. But um, now if you want a complete control of all inputs, outputs, and patch bay and everything else, use Jack Audio. But it's com complicated. It's got a learning curve. and every, I don't use it very often, and when I do, I forget half of what I need to know, and then I've got to relearn it. And it's so complicated. Uh, it's for so, wo so wonderfully complicated, but... To use it as you're switching, uh, you know, like you really just, me, I need to get it set up and leave it alone because it's just too hard to switch on the fly. You can do that, but uh, LBS, it's more like, it's software, but it's more like a mixing console. It's simple, and uh, so uh, that's, you know, the, I wouldn't want to use this to do my live switching of audio, changing back and forth from mics and stuff. And I have never tried out any of the other, like the audio meter decay up, I like it the way it is. Peak meter type, simple peak. Um, that's fine the way it is. And the, actually, YouTube, I'm streaming to YouTube, and that is the only sample rate they take anyway. And then, okay, channels, look there. Ah, there you go. Why did I not click on that? There you go. What do you want to mix down to? Stereo, 2.1, 4.0, 4.1, 5.1, .1, 5 .1, or 7.1. That's what you would, that's just, I thought it was more complicated than that. I, evidently, uh, yeah, reading it on their website, it sounded more complicated. That's all you got to do. Okay, let's make sure it's still on stereo. Okay, um, so there you go. I, I, I thought I was right about that just from the way things turned out, that it was mixing whatever you have, all your channels that you have going. I don't think there's anything on any of these other channels but it uh, shouldn't hurt to have them turned on uh, well unless unless there was something plugged in that could make background noise you know like if you had a fancy sound card or something and it was making a little hiss when it was not being used when there was no mic or instrument plugged into it or there was an instrument plugged into like a guitar and it was making a hiss then you wouldn't want that just that hiss in your you know in every recording you know what I'm, you get what I'm saying so um 
you might you, you know I wouldn't say always leave all those checked uh, usually when it comes to sound don't turn on anything you don't need uh, to get a nice clean sound uh, but with computers digital stuff you're usually not going to get a noise unless you got something analog plugged into it so or unless you get a feedback loop out of what you do or something like that that's all another thing <clears throat> but uh, anyway I'm going to leave those like that I think it's going to change though to be honest uh, when I, I am go think I'm going to uh, go ahead and switch my scene collection over to uh, well let's find out so I'm going to switch my scene collection over to uh, a different one like one of these five or six and that will have the uh, I think you can do that while you're recording yeah you can and then I'll have the uh, camera one inputs and stuff I still think I, I'm I still want to use that uh, I would like to not lose my you know camera one camera because what I'm planning on doing is stop using it as a camera and just using it as audio and so then I'll only have this one which is usually behind me now I can turn around and face it but see I darken it and aim it exactly as close as I can you know straight on the monitor zoom in um, it's a little so it's a little harder to stay in the like let me see uh, well I've got the lapels on so let's make use of them I don't have a shortcut so I have to click, click the, the deal. deal have one for the SM58 okay now I'm on the lapels okay <clears throat> now see what I can do I have done it before oh it's <laughs> ow I can't see whether I'm in the picture though and so uh, oh it'll just be my head okay so um, that's no good I guess I, oh I know what I've been doing I zoom it out I zoom it out before I start I zoom it in get it all set up like it is right now and then I go to my uh, browser I, there's a and I uh, go to here and I can uh, whoops the flash doesn't work and then I can use this to zoom out I'm not going to do it because I don't want to do it right now um, it's not what I'm aiming to do right now <coughs> and close that now okay so um, um, <clears throat> but now you can hear there's the uh, lapel mics sound a lot better going through the phone than they do just like this going straight to the computer without any they're just the mics going to the computer you know well to that uh, I guess uh, to be fair to this to myself I should probably try the mic input because it could possibly sound better than that little sound, two dollar sound card I got them real cheap they would usually cost about eight to ten dollars but I mean it's a little USB sound card and the they work. Uh, the reason I really bought the first one was because I actually messed up. Uh, I, I I shorted. Um, I was. I'm going into. Okay. Um, well. Okay. My little um, Dell 6000 laptop over here. I was using to get out in the garage, and I was playing music while I was doing stuff, and the music quit, or one side of it quit, or something. So I did what you always do: check the connections, uh, uh, and so. I unplugged it and plugged it back in but the thing is I had uh, I was using one of these metal uh, female to female to connect it from the uh, output you know it was a 3.5 millimeter male to male and then it went to to make it long enough to go to my speakers out there uh, or my amplifier you know going to the speakers I uh, had uh, Let's see. What, well, I'm on the uh, lapel, so it didn't matter. I thought I was gotten away from the mic. Um, let's go ahead and get back, back to the, the mic, mic now. now. Um, the, uh, the being that it's all metal, when you're in between spots, you know, it was actually t got a, 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 a just a real quick short, you know, dead short, and in the audio signal. I've never seen that hard anything ever make a little pop in the sound is all it ever did but what I should have known was uh, what it did is it blew out 
cable. I'm trying to figure out where my. Obviously, I'm wired to the computer. I'm trying to figure out where that cable. If it's under the wheels of the chair. Okay, so what it did was it blew out. It burnt it. To, Blew out the chip. It burned up the chip in the uh, the audio in, uh, output chip on the on the laptop, and it's way down in there, hard to get to to replace. It's an SMB part, you know, service mount. Um, uh, and I and the reason I should have known that is because I had a friend tw ten years before that that had a um, Dell laptop, one of the earlier, probably a little bit earlier one than that. Yeah, quite a bit earlier, but anyway, same basic type of laptop, and he. Uh, well, I almost did it to that laptop. We were he was using it to play. I was we both ran sound for uh, cons, concerts and uh, at the and, to, and at this place he was uh, I don't know why he was anyway he was mixing that night. Normally I mix at this particular place called God's Place and uh, he was uh, well I think he was helping out. They had brought in there's another guy named Barry that would that had a big nice sound system and. Knew more than me and Bruce put together. He taught me a, a lot, and I think he taught Bruce something too. Anyway, Barry, I think Barry was doing the show, and uh, they had paid him to bring in his stuff, you know. And um, um, Bruce was helping him out, and it was this was the show was really over, and he, that's why he was playing music. Show was over, and he was just playing music and you know getting ready to. And I was gonna come and help tear things down, and. Uh, Anyway, I started to grab the connection and unplug it and pl check it, unplug it, plug it back in. That's the simplest thing to do. He said, oh, don't do that. And he said, and he told me the long story, like I'm telling a long story now, of how he did that to the laptop. And uh, it blew out the sound chip on the, you know, one of the one of the chips to do with the sound on the output of the laptop. And it cost him 500 bucks to get it fixed. He got it fixed. This was, at the time, a new laptop paid like a thousand, twelve, took somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars for it back in the late nineties. It was when it was new tech, you know. And uh, <clears throat> um, so, and he and he paid 500 bucks to get it fixed, which I wouldn't do. <laughs> of course, back then there wasn't no little two dollar USB sound cards either. There were no such thing. I don't think that laptop had USB because I don't think they had in, implemented USB yet. I'm sure they were had it invented by then. But anyway, maybe maybe it did, but um, anyway, I would say these things are mine and his are 5 to 10 years apart and they still have that problem. And what I found out, you would think it was a design flaw or something and it turns out that Dell, rather than put a fuse in there that could be replaced, or even a, a thermal switch, you know, that would like, maybe not so much thermal, but well, I guess so. Short causes heat, but anyway, a circuit breaker that would go off for a while and then come back on later, you know. <clears throat> There's a lot of different types you could put in there. <sighs> it wouldn't have to be a fuse that blows, you know, <clears throat> that takes a lot of space to... <sighs> <coughs> and you know, laptop's a small device, you know. Um, but they just decided to put a sacrificial chip in there that would uh, would blow, and then it could be replaced, but it would blow. And so all I have on that laptop is uh, speakers that are built in. They work, but the output doesn't, and uh, the input works. And so anyway, buying the uh, little USB sound card, you know, it's an input and output fix my problem except for that they stick out you know I'm always worried I'm going to break the USB connector they're really easy to break plus they're fat they're just really fat so you can't put anything the, the USBs on the side are not, not stacked on top of each other you can't put anything in along with it uh, but I never would leave it in there you know I just I don't, anytime I had it in there I was just scared I was going to bump into it or you know you, you're always turning laptops and doing this with them and doing that you know and so it didn't turn out to be very uh, ergonomic <clears throat> But uh, anyway, uh, that is plugged into my desktop, and that's how I got the sound set up for the uh, <clears throat> to work like this. Now, I guess I will try. I'm going to try it. I'm going to. Um, so I'm wondering if I want to. I think I'll just start another video with that because I've rambled on and on here and uh, 
So I'll stop this one and then start another one that'll be just about trying out the mic input along with the line input. See if they, I think maybe if I plug in the mic, it will mute the line input. So we'll see. All right, um, I'm going go now and uh, see you later.